Is it an alien ship, a comet? Scientists and researchers are left puzzled. First contact has happened, but not the way anyone imagined. CERN, the world's most powerful scientific instrument, sent a focused signal toward an interstellar object known as 3I Atlas. Nine minutes later, something answered. Their collider to open up a portal to communicate with extraterrestrial beings. Well, and one of them are the occupants from 3I Atlas. A round trip faster than light, an impossible reply. And yet it happened. The response wasn't a greeting. It was mathematics. Not random noise, not a pattern of pulses. A proof. A proof for what? For a kind of technology that makes our most advanced physics look like child's play. What many overlooked in those first reports is that the message didn't just say, we are here. It told us where they were going next. And it might be far closer than anyone thinks. Inside CERN's control room, the air was heavy with tension and caffeine. The team expected a long night of waiting. Coffee mugs steamed beside flickering monitors. The low hum of cryogenic pumps filled the silence. Based on 3i Atlas's position, more than 80 million miles away, physics was straightforward. A radio signal traveling at light speed should have taken roughly 15 minutes each way, 30 minutes round trip. That's the rule book of relativity. So, at best, they expected a faint echo of their own transmission half an hour later. Most quietly admitted they would likely get nothing at all. But that's not what happened. Exactly 9 minutes and 22 seconds after their transmission ended, the receivers flared alive. A surge of power flooded the boards, clean, structured, and unimaginably complex. Every sensor locked onto a single coordinate, the trajectory of 3i, Atlas. The room froze. A nine-minute reply was impossible. It broke Einstein's speed limit, the cosmic rule that nothing outruns light. It was as absurd as mailing a letter to someone across the planet and getting their handwritten answer back before you'd even left the post office. Yet the instruments didn't lie. No interference, no glitch. The signal was real. Then came the second shock. The message was pure mathematics, but on a scale humanity had never witnessed. It began with a redefinition of the fine structure constant, a fundamental number describing the strength between light and matter, calculated to a precision hundreds of times beyond human capability. It was a demonstration of knowledge so staggering. It was like a caveman receiving a blueprint for a quantum computer. That's when the realization hit. This wasn't a hello. It was a declaration of superiority. Whatever intelligence controlled 3i Atlas hadn't simply heard our whisper. It had answered with a roar for three seconds and three seconds only, data poured in. Yet those three seconds carried more information than humanity has ever transmitted into space in its entire history. After confirming the fine structure constant, the sequence shifted. It began mapping geometric relationships across multiple dimensions, shapes that even CERN's best supercomputers could barely render. The displays filled with elegant rotating structures, 11-dimensional lattices that twisted and folded as if space itself were alive. At first glance, the patterns seemed abstract. But as analysts dug deeper, one detail became clear. It wasn't art. It was engineering, a blueprint, a set of instructions for a process, or perhaps a machine, that manipulated space-time at the quantum level. It described a method to fold reality itself. If true, it was nothing less than a key to the impossible, faster than light travel, limitless energy, communication without distance, the kind of power that redefines what civilization means. But then came the question that chilled everyone in the room. Was this a gift or a test? Because receiving technology from a civilization so far beyond us isn't a miracle, it's a mirror. And sometimes what it reflects back isn't hope. It's our own insignificance. Handing a book of matches to an infant is dangerous. Handing the secrets of space-time manipulation to a species like ours could be catastrophic. Across secret meeting rooms around the world, analysts argued over one chilling theory. The signal was a filter. Any civilization capable of understanding and constructing what those numbers described was perhaps deemed ready. Any species that couldn't, or destroyed itself trying, failed the test. Suddenly, the nine-minute reply made a different kind of sense. It wasn't just showing off faster-than-light communication. It was the first stage of the examination. Can you even comprehend how we are talking to you? Our collective answer for now was a quiet and undeniable no. 
The implications were staggering. Because Atlas was no longer just a comet. It was a probe, a messenger, or maybe even a cosmic library card. The object itself might be nothing more than a vessel, a natural-looking shell designed to carry this information through the galaxy. A needle drifting in a cosmic haystack, its journey could have begun thousands, maybe millions of years ago, launched from a star system so distant we might never even see its light. It was a message in a bottle, tossed into the black ocean of the universe, waiting for someone clever enough not only to spot it, but to ask it the right question. We had done exactly that. A simple sequence of prime numbers. And in return, it gave us the secrets of the universe. Now the burden of that knowledge was ours alone. But hidden in the equations was something stranger than technology. Something almost spiritual. A star chart from the void. Inside CERN and observatories across the planet, physicists and mathematicians worked in sleepless shifts, fueled by caffeine and the electric thrill of discovery. The complex geometry and physics were one thing, but the final part of the three-second transmission was something else entirely. It wasn't an equation. It wasn't a constant. It was a set of coordinates, a star map. At first glance, it looked like any other astronomical reference. Using known pulsars and galactic landmarks, the team triangulated the position in three-dimensional space. The global astronomy community held its breath, expecting the coordinates to lead to a distant, star, home system, but they didn't. The coordinates pointed to a seemingly empty patch of sky in the Buddha's constellation, a region astronomers call the Great Nothing, or the Buddha's Void, and what they found defied reason. The Buddha's Void is real, an almost spherical region of space, 30 million light years across, nearly empty of galaxies. To visualize it, if the Milky Way were a marble in the center of a room, that room would normally be filled with thousands of other marbles. The Buddha's Void is like walking into a city-sized room and finding only one or two marbles inside. A statistical impossibility, for the message to originate from there made no sense. But what if 3i Atlas wasn't the source? But a relay? What if the nine-minute reply hadn't been generated by the comet itself, but routed through it from somewhere else? The theory fit the data. Theresa's Atlas could be an anchor point for a stable wormhole or a quantum-entangled communicator a kind of cosmic cell tower quietly orbiting our sun. The real sender might reside far out in that void, using the comet as a temporary antenna to reach us. This possibility shattered everything we thought we knew about our place in the cosmos. It wasn't just a probe or a stray signal drifting through emptiness. It was a beacon, a node and a network stretching across impossible distances a communications web built by a civilization that may not even live around a star. Some theorists called it the work of a Type IV civilization, entities so advanced they can harness the energy of countless galaxies, manipulating the fabric of reality itself to speak across the void. The coordinates, once believed to mark a location, were never meant to guide us to a planet or homeworld. They were an invitation, a test of perception. A challenge to stop gazing at familiar stars and instead look into the dark spaces between them where light rarely travels and time itself slows. Slowly, the brightest minds on Earth began to understand what this meant. The message wasn't designed for us specifically. It was meant for any civilization capable of breaking through its layers of encryption and recognizing its purpose. It wasn't saying, come find us. It was saying, we are watching who's capable of understanding, and if that's true, then somewhere out there, and far beyond the reach of our telescopes, an ancient intelligence is watching us right now. Not from a planet. Not from a galaxy, but from the silent abyss that connects everything. That's where it came from. Tying all of creation together in a single, impossible thread. The message from 3IR Atlas gave us a glimpse into impossible physics. A blueprint for world-altering technology and a map that led straight into nothingness. But what no one tells you, what truly haunted those who studied it, was that the most important part of the message was its silence. After those three seconds, it said nothing more. No greeting, no warning, no philosophy. Just pure data, cold and unfeeling. It was as if someone had tossed a textbook onto our desk and walked away. That silence carried a weight deeper than any words could. It wasn't the silence of distance. 
It was the silence of indifference. For the scientists and world leaders who saw the raw data, that quiet was more unsettling than any noise. This wasn't a friendly conversation with a cosmic neighbor. It was an encounter with something that operated on scales of time and thought we can't even begin to imagine an intelligence so ancient and vast that we were nothing. More than a passing curiosity, like a scientist. Glancing at bacteria in a petri dish, it had no need to explain. No reason to comfort. It simply was. And in that silence, it left a chilling message unspoken. You were not meant to understand. Even as a thought experiment, a what if born from imagination, it forces us to face a truth harder than any alien revelation. The unbearable loneliness of our species. We dream of first contact as a grand cinematic moment. Shimmering ships in the sky, enlightened beings descending to share their wisdom. But what if it's nothing like that? What if it's small and quiet, a faint mathematical whisper hidden inside the static of a passing rock? What if it already happened, and only a handful of people ever knew? Imagine carrying that secret. You've seen proof that the laws of physics aren't absolute, that they can be bent, rewritten, broken. You've glimpsed evidence of intelligences that treat the universe as a sandbox, rearranging it at will. How could you tell the world? How could anyone announce that reality itself is negotiable and that we are being watched by something ancient, immeasurable, and aware? The panic, the collapse, the chaos. Civilization would tear itself apart overnight. And maybe that's why it had to stay silent. Maybe that's why they stay silent. The story of CERN and 3 Eye Atlas may be fiction, but it stands on a foundation of real questions that haunt modern science. We do search for patterns in the noise. We do send messages into the stars, hoping someone will answer. And yes, objects like 3 Eye Atlas do pass through our solar system, carrying mysteries we can barely measure. The fiction lies not in the discovery, but in the reply. Yet within that imagined reply lives something profoundly human. A reflection of our curiosity and our fear. Our desperate need to matter in an indifferent universe. Because if the message had truly been real, if those coordinates to an empty void were genuine, it would suggest we are not only watched, but tested, maybe scattered across the galaxy. Other worlds have received their own version of the cosmic textbook. Some may have deciphered it. Some may have perished trying. And some, like us, may still be staring at the silence, unsure whether they were being invited or warned. In the end, that's what the Three Eye Atlas mystery really represents. A mirror held up to our place in the cosmos. It tells one humbling story, that we are still in our infancy, barely scratching the surface of understanding. The message, real or imagined, reminds us that every equation we solve, every mystery we uncover, might just be another breadcrumb on a path laid down eons ago by minds far greater than ours. And so the world moves on, unaware that for a few fleeting moments, something may have spoken to us, and then gone silent. But maybe silence was the message all along. Maybe it wasn't meant to answer our questions, but to make us ask better ones. Because somewhere out there, in the cold spaces between stars, the experiment continues. And whether we're ready or not, We've already been noticed if we ever received a message like this, should we answer back or stay silent forever? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more cosmic mysteries. More cosmic mysteries.